Hey guys, this is Srini and welcome to my Python tutorial videos on my YouTube channel Python for Microscopist. In today's video, I'm going to talk about using region props in Python and this function allows us to measure properties of labeled regions. For example, if you're segmenting your images and uh, you have a bunch of uh, little features that you would like to quantify, then region props can be a great way of doing that or a simple way of doing this task. So let me first start by showing you the documentation so i am on the scikit images documentation page and here is the region props using this is very simple once you have a labeled image all you need to do is uh, first of all call this function from scikit image dot measure region props and then supply your labeled images and then uh, and then uh, any other parameters if uh, if they are relevant and what can you actually print? I mean, region props can actually measure a whole bunch of stuff and not everything makes sense probably in your case, but that's why you have to go ahead and pick which ones actually make sense. For example, uh, equivalent diameter. If you're looking at like roundish things and if you want to look at, okay, what is the average diameter of your features, then that can be a good one to report, right? Uh, and area and so on. Uh, I'll, I'll pick a few, let's actually pick a few and then uh, write a few lines of code in our spider IDE. And uh, uh, let's have a look at how the output looks like. And in the interest of time, I'm gonna copy and paste a few lines of uh, code at a time. And of course, as usual, I'm gonna share my code on my GitHub page. But before jumping in, let me show you the example I picked. Well, you can do pretty much the same thing if you're interested in cell counting, for example. Yeah, if you have an image of a bunch of cells and you figured out a way to segment them and uh, label them, then you can do that. In this case, I randomly downloaded, uh, well, I downloaded a random image from the internet that is uh, uh, a microscope image of a steel sample, cast a steel sample where you can actually see the carbide uh, uh, nodules in here. So let's segment them, let's threshold them, and uh, uh, look at the average size of these. So starting with, uh, of course, our libraries. Which libraries uh, are we going to work with? As I just showed you, it's going to be region props, right, is one of the ones. So I'm going to imp uh, import region uh, props in a minute. But let, let's save that for now. First, we have to segment the image. So I'm going to import uh, uh, measure IO image as you byte from scikit image and again our region props is part of the measure module over there and i'm going to import matplotlib for plotting and of course uh, color uh, because i would like to change uh, for example in this case rgb to gray because this is a uh, i downloaded this image from uh, the internet and by default it was a rgb image i just need a gray image so let's go ahead and convert that and i'm also converting the image as u byte so once we run this you can actually see what the output looks like so, uh, since we converted this into a U byte, which means we converted the image into unsigned integer 8, so the image size is 1020 by 1272 right now. Okay, so far, no, nothing tricky. We just imported an image. Now, let's uh, threshold this image, right? So, how do we threshold this? There are a few ways of doing thresholding, but since this is a binary threshold problem, uh, uh, probably you watched my multi nary threshold or multi otsu uh, video, one of my previous videos, but right now let's just use a single threshold, which is our default threshold otsu, and this is going to threshold our image. So if I actually go ahead and run these lines, we should get a value for threshold up here. It says the value is 143, which means all the pixels below 143 in my example are probably these dark regions and above 143 is the background. That's the separation that Otsu is uh, suggesting. So once the it is uh, uh, separated again, how do you label this? Again, many ways to label this, but uh, because again, this is binary, the best way to do that is, uh, I'm gonna say my labeled image is again, measure dot label, okay? I'm labeling it. And what am I labeling? Every uh, uh, pixel, this is my threshold, every pixel below the value of 143 in my image okay and uh, uh, this is what again you can go ahead and uh, look at uh, measure dot label documentation I don't want to make this tutorial any longer by talking about other stuff that I have already covered in other uh, in, in my other uh, uh, tutorials and by the way the connectivity is again uh, uh, it's it's the maximum number of orthogonal hops uh, where it considers a pixel as a neighbor okay 
And uh, uh, if, if you put like none, then the full connectivity of input data. This is basically, you may as well not input this, but uh, uh, typically, uh, I mean, what I'm trying to say here is how many ever the number of uh, dimensions are. So if I have a three dimension image, go and do it in three dimensions, okay? Uh, Again, I promise not to talk too much and make this video long, but uh, I hope that makes some sense. For a 2D image, again, just an example, my connectivity is uh, two. For a 3D image, my connectivity is three. Okay, that's all that basically means. Okay, so now we are going to label each connected entity as one object, right, at this, at this uh, uh, position right here, okay? And once we have a label image, uh, now let's actually, uh, I can go ahead and look at it. In fact, let's go ahead and uh, uh, let me plt dot show label underscore image. Okay, let's have a quick look at this. I'm not sure if I ran these lines, so let's go ahead and do this. So down here you see our labeled image, which is great. Now every one of these object is labeled, but that's a bad image, right? I don't like the default way it's actually uh, plotting so I usually uh, do this one extra step let me go ahead and show you so we can see it on the screen yeah this is again optional step what I'm trying to do is label to RGB again uh, uh, it, it returns an RGB image where the color coded labels are painted on top of the image okay the labels are color coded they're uh, painted on top of the image so that's what label to RGB actually does so let's go ahead and plot this so you can see exactly how it looks like on the screen it looks much better again this is only for visualization purposes okay you see that so the background is background and on top of that each object each labeled object okay is in a different color over there so it makes uh, a great uh, a great uh, you know uh, visualization right there Okay, that's it. So far, what have we done? We loaded an image, we thresholded it, uh, we measured the labels, and then we kind of uh, uh, colored it in a nice, nice visually appealing way. That's it. So far, we have our label ready, in, okay? Now, let's get to this region props, okay? So let me go ahead and create a variable called props or region props in this case. I'm going to, again, measure.regionprops underscore table, okay? Uh, previously, the documentation I showed you is for region props, right? So whenever you call region props, it just gives you uh, all the region props, okay? And uh, uh, I like to do it re region props underscore table. There is another uh, function. Uh, under measure region props underscore table okay I'm repeating this multiple times so uh, hopefully uh, I'm trying to make sure that you understand the difference and by putting this extension underscore table it returns these parameters that are the properties as a pandas compatible table that is the key point here which means now I can work with this data right away rather than just printing it on the screen okay so there are a whole bunch of available uh, region props, but uh, uh, I said pandas available or pandas compatible uh, table. So we may as well visualize the output by using pandas. So I'm going to import pandas library and I'm going to create a data frame by label, I mean uh, a DF. And I'm just going to look at this props. Again, this is a pandas compatible table. It's not a table in pandas. So I still have to create a data frame. That's exactly what I'm doing here. And I'm printing the first five uh, rows so we get a good idea of what's going on. So let's go ahead and run these lines. And by the way, like I said, these two steps are optional just for visualization purposes because what exactly we are using here is the labeled image which we created over there, okay? So if you, if you think this is confusing, I can just remove this. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six lines of code to do such a great, amazing application right here. So let's go ahead and run these lines that we just added and hopefully you should see, uh, oh, I did not run that, sorry. So let's go ahead and run this one more time and we should see a table on the right hand side any second now. Oh, it's already there. Let me scroll. So there you go. So now we have uh, a, a pandas table. If you want, uh, where is my props? Uh, uh, if you want, you can actually, <clears throat> sorry, my DF. 
the data frame that I open right here and let me make it a bit larger. Well, let's fill the screen so you can see. So uh, we have label area equivalent uh, uh, a diameter, mean intensity and solidity. All of these reported for every one of these objects that it recognized in, in the image. Okay, so you can uh, pick your own uh, properties to report. In fact, you can pick a whole bunch of properties to report and, uh, and figure out which ones are useful for you. But uh, I hope with this tutorial you learned how to at least properly uh, extract the properties of uh, the labels or objects that are labeled in your image that you have segmented or thresholded out. Please go ahead and test this on your own regions and uh, cell segmentation is a great example here. You can use one of the many methods to segment your cells. In fact, I covered this topic as one of my previous tutorials and then go ahead and use region props table and you can also try region props and see what the difference is, okay? Please read the documentation. Thank you very much for your attention and I hope you found this tutorial to be useful and let's meet with a different topic in the next one.